Now that we have studied digraphs and regular expressions, we're ready to do finite state machines. Let's say we want to figure out when we finish capturing four binary bits, ones and zeros. It's usually referred to as a nibble. And so what you do is you start out, you've got, you've received no digits at all. And then you receive the first digit and then the second digit and then the third digit and the fourth digit. You've received the fourth digit. We did it, okay? Now, how many conditions do we have to this particular system? These are called states. And so I've got the first state, no digits at all. I've got the second state, one digit, and then two digits, and then three digits, and four digits. So I have five states. Now I can represent these using, well, kind of a notation similar to what we've been using with our digraphs. I can have one, two, three, for five states. I'm going to label these Q sub 0, Q sub 1, Q2, Q3, Q4. All right. Now, which is our starting state, the initial state, the one where we're got, we've got no digits at all? Well, that would be Q0. And so I'm going to put a little arrow there to identify it as the reset state, the starting state. Now, if I receive a 0 or a 1, that takes me to the next state. So I know I've got one digit. And then I receive another 0 or a 1, and I go to the next state. And I receive another 0 or a 1, and I go to the next state. And then I receive another 0 or a 1, and I get to the last state. Now, there is a way to identify this as the last state. Instead of being a single circle, I make this double circle, this, these two circles that are embedded in each other. Now, what I need to know also that takes me from state to state to state, well, with this system, it's kind of silly because I don't really have anything but a one or a zero coming in. I should also, on each one of these lines, these arrows, say a zero or a one will take me to the next state. A zero or a one will take me to the next state. A zero or a one to the next, a zero or a one to the next state. And so we just go chunk, chunk, chunk to this next state, next state after we receive each bit. Let me change this just a little bit. What if instead I want to see if this binary number, this nibble, is an odd number or an even number? What makes it an odd number or an even number? Well, remember that the least significant bit of a binary number gives the, the 2 to the 0 or the 1 power or not a 1 power. In other words, if I've got a 0 as the last digit that comes in, that will say that it's an even number. If I've got a 1 that's the last digit that comes in, that'll be an odd number. So I've got actually two final states here. I'm going to label one of them Q4, the other one Q5. This top one, that'll be our even state. This, is, this will be the final place we get to if we received an even number. And the bottom one, that's going to be the state, the condition, if we received an odd number. So I receive a bit a bit, a bit. And then from Q3, if I receive a zero, I go to even. From Q3, if I receive a one, I go to odd. And you can actually tell by which one of these places we stopped at, which one, which number we received. Did we receive an odd number or an even number? Well, this diagram here is something that represents a finite state machine otherwise known as an FSM, all right? And an FSM, or a finite state machine, consists of five things. The first thing is a set of states, all right? And these are represented with, in graph theory with these vertices. And that set of states we'll call capital Q, all right? And so in the case of this one, we've got Q0, Q1, and so on, all right? Now, the second thing that we have is a set of directed edges, all right? And that's these edges right here. We'll just call this E, and I'll just identify it with a state E sub 0, E1, and so on. Now, I didn't actually identify names or give each one of those uh, edges an identifier, but you get the idea. Each one of these edges is contained in some sort of a set. Then we also have an alphabet to identify or label the transitions. And here's a new word I use, transitions. So this set of directed edges, these are actually referred to as transitions. 
they allow us to transition from one state to the next state, from one condition to the next condition. Now, the next thing is we have a single state, and I'm going to call this Q0, that is our initial state. And so Q0 is an element inside of the set Q. Now just one, we can only start in one place. This is our initial, and, and in the case of this diagram right here, it's Q0. Now it is possible, however, to have multiple final states. So a set of final states, we'll call this F, which is a subset of Q. And notice that it doesn't have to be a proper subset. All the states could end up being final states in some of the diagrams. In this case, we just have Q4 and Q5. Those are our final states. Now, I mentioned this idea of our regular expressions, or the reg x, remember? Now, to give you a kind of a refresher course on regular expressions, regular expressions were built up from a set of characters in an alphabet. And so, let's see, one of, the, one of them, remember, was the empty string. So the empty string, and we refer to it as lambda. Some people refer to it as, lam, uh, as epsilon, but we're going to use lambda as our symbol for the empty string. So an empty string, that's a regular expression in itself. And then we could also have a simple character from our alphabet. And so for my example here, my alphabet is going to be equal to the set of letters, lowercase letters, all the way up from A to Z, right? All right. Now, we also had concatenation. And that was whenever we could put two letters together, no space, they had to come in that sequence. Um, and then we had union, right? And the union was, we used the little symbol for the or. So we had A or B, so that meant in order to satisfy that regular expression, it could just be A or it could just be B. But it couldn't be both and it couldn't be any other letter. And then we also used star. If you remember, star just allowed us to put this little star, this little asterisk up next to whatever regular expression we were trying to represent. And then we also had the cross. And the cross looked like that. Now, these two were very closely related. For example, A star, if you remember, was we could have no A's, we could have the empty string, we could have one A, or AA, or AAA, or AAAA, and any number of A's repeated from zero up to, you know, however many you wanted. The plus or the cross, that one said we can't have the empty string. It's exactly the same as star, but we don't include the empty string. So this one is A or AA or AAA or AAAA and so on. Now what we want to do now is show how finite state machines, those graphs with the directed edges, how they can be used to represent any regular expression that we may have. Remember, the regular expressions build upon these. So, for example, A or B could actually be concatenated with something else. So you're actually using all of these components in order to build your regular, uh, your regular expression. The question is, is, let's just start with these guys in order to figure out what sort of a finite state machine we can represent with this. Now, empty string. Empty string is nothing, right? And so as soon as you get into your initial state, bam, you're in your final state because you don't get any characters at all that need to move you along the transitions. So our final state is also our initial state. So believe it or not, that is the finite state machine, the digraph that represents the um, regular expression for the empty string. Initialize it to the final state. There you are. All right. But now for a character, let's start out with some sort of an initial state. Now in that initial state, we haven't received anything yet. We're waiting to receive something, just like the string of ones and zeros we were talking about in the previous example. Well, what's the thing that, that's going to take us to our final state? Well, is a transition with the character A. And so this is our initial state, this is our final state. To get that transition is just a single character of A. 
Now, if that made sense, then the concatenation should probably also make sense because what we're looking at here is we need to have A followed by B. And so we're going to have an initial state. We're going to get taken to the next state with an A. And then we're going to take and get taken to a final state with a B. And so in order to get from the initial state to the final state, you have to get an A and then a B. That's the only way to get from one end to the other. What about the union? That one's a little different because an A could get us to the final state or a B could get us to the final state. So we're going to start off with an initial state. If I get an A, that's going to take me to one final state. That's one way. But I could also get a B that takes me to another final state. And that's kind of like the previous example where it was odd or it was even. An odd took us one way, an even took us the other way. Both of these guys are, are, refer are, are they're terminal states, they're final states. So uh, a, receiving an A or a B will show the completion of that particular regular expression. Now these two get a little bit more complicated. Let's start out with the star. Now remember, an empty string that's fine. So believe it or not, it starts out looking a lot like the empty string. So we've got this empty string. The initial state and the final state are the same thing. So it turns out that if I get no A's at all, nothing, I'm still in the final state. But what if I receive an A, a single A? Well, a single A, I should still be in a final state. What if I receive two A's? I should still be in a final state. Three A's and so on. So what we're going to do is we are going to make a loop. If you remember from our discussion about directed graphs, a loop is an edge that just simply exits a state or exits a vertex and comes back into that same vertex. And so this particular diagram, that's enough to show us that as many A's as we get from zero all the way up to, you know, a thousand, that is going to keep us in the final state. What about a cross? Well, a cross, remember, was different than the star in that we had to receive at least one A first. And so that's kind of almost a combination of receiving this single character, this single element, and the star. It's a combination of those two. So what we're going to do is we're going to start out with an initial state. This initial state is not going to be a final state. That initial state says I have to get at least one A before I can get to a final state. Now once I've gotten to the final state, then I can get as many A's as I want. And so something like A cross, that actually would be a finite state machine that would represent A cross. Now remember, regular expressions can be made up of regular expressions. And so any of those different expressions that I showed you on the board just a moment ago, they can be combined to make new, more complex regular expressions. So we might have something like the concatenation of A and B, but then do a star. Now, remember, the star said we can start out with an empty string. No, no characters at all. So it turns out that our initial state can also be our final state. All right, so we're just going to go ahead. We'll label this guy Q0. Now, what do we do in order to figure out if we've received one of the sequences or two of the sequences? Remember that this guy defines the set. We've got the empty string and then A, B, and then A, B, A, B, and then A, B, A, B, A, B, and so on. So that set consists of a lot of elements. But what is the key thing of, to, to see here is that we've got A followed by B always. So if an A occurs, we have to get a B. Well, what we want to do is come back to the final state. We could generate another final state. You know, we could have A going to, a new, final, going to an intermediate state and then B going to another final state, but then that would only take care of this guy. And then in order to get this one, you'd have to go A, B to another final state. And then to get this guy, you'd have to go to A, B again. Here's an easier way. What we're going to do is we're going to have some sort of an intermediate state that we get to by going through the transition A. And by going through the transition A, what we're going to have is a non-final state that is waiting for a B. If we receive a B, we go back to the final state. 
And so does this, does this finite state machine, does this digraph that represents a finite state machine handle all of these cases? Well, it handles the empty string by starting out in the final state. Then if we get A, B, we come back to the final state. And then A, B, A, B, back to the final state, and so forth. So it looks like this one does handle our, uh, our requirements from this regular expression. But what if we've got a regular expression like A or B star? Now remember, A or B star actually said, well, I could have A or I could have B. We're going to start out, because this is a star, we're going to start out with our initial state as also being a final state so that we can just empty string, we're right there. But what happens, what does this set look like? Well, the set that's generated by this guy is the empty string, and it's A, it could be B, it could be A, A, it could be B, B, it could be A, B, any number of things, right? So basically, any sequence that including the empty string that we can generate with the letters A and B. And since it's any sequence, then if I get an A, I can come back in here. And if I get a B, I can come back in here. Notice this notation. I've taken this directed edge and I've put both A and B separated by commas in order to identify that particular, um, that particular transition back into the final state. Now, in previous lessons, we've talked about something called the Ethernet preamble and start of frame delimiter. Um, basically, in order to, when you're receiving a message on, a, on an Ethernet network, every one of the frames starts out with 101010 and a whole bunch of 10s ending with a 1-1. One, one. Now this 1-1, one, one, that those two ones in a row identify the fact that the message itself, specifically the addressing, is going to start right after that point. So what we're looking for is to identify that as a final state. All right. Now, really what this looks like is just 1-0 plus, because we need to hit get ex at least one of them. Um, because what you're looking to do is you're looking to use those one zeros to synchronize everybody so that they know exactly the, the rate at which the bits are coming at them. And so we need to get at least one one zero. Recognize that one zero at least once, followed by a one one. So what does that look like with a regular expression? Well, let's start out with the one zero. So we have an initial state. We're going to call this Q0. And what's going to happen is we need to get a... 1 followed by a 0, all right? And that 1, 0, or 1, 0, that's going to give us, show us that we've received at least one of those guys. Let's assume that we're just looking at this case where it's the last 1, 0, 1, 1. So we've got 1, 0, and then I'm going to come down here. We'll get a 1 going to Q3 followed by another 1 going to Q4. Now, the 1011, that's the minimum number of one zeros we can have, 1011, would take us actually to a final state, being Q4. But what if we're actually receiving more one zeros? What if it goes 1010? Well, in that case, uh, we're not quite where we should be, right? Well, it turns out that if I Go from 1, 0, 1, 1. If instead of receiving the second one, I receive a 0, what we can do is actually come back here with a 0. Drawing sort of filled up my space a little too much here. And what we're looking at here is we can get 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1. Okay, and, and it's this one zero, it's this loop right here, which allows us to get a sequence of more than just one one zero. Now we have shown how we can use digraphs in order to represent these finite state machines, but it turns out there is another way to do it, and that is some, with something called a state transition table. This table serves as a summary to show us which condition or state we go to based on the state we're currently in 
and the value of the input to our system. Let me go ahead and do an example up here. It may be a lot easier to show with an example. Um, I'm going to have my current states listed. And let's just say I have, how about Q0, Q1, Q2. So there are all my states. And now what I want to do is have over here columns representing what the, the destination state, what we're transitioning to based on the, the, the input to our system. So let's say that our alphabet consists of A, B, and C. We can have A, B, or C as the input. And so for each one of these rows, we're going to identify exactly where we're going to based on our different values of A, B, and C. So let's go ahead and ah, let's just fill something out. How about Q2, Q1, 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 Q2, Q1, Q0, Q0, Q2. Just making some stuff up, all right? And let's see if we can't come up with the state diagram that represents this. And by the way, there's something missing from this table. In this table, I also have to tell you what the initial state is. We'll just call the initial state, we'll just make it Q0. And we'll talk about the final states. Remember, you can have more than one final state. We're just going to have one in this case. We'll call it Q2. So let's go ahead and draw this out. We'll have Q0, and how about Q1 and Q2? And remember, Q2 is our final state. Q0 is our initial state. Now, all we need to do is, do is add the transitions. And this table shows us what our transitions are. So in Q0, if we get an A, we're going to Q2. So A brings us from Q0 to Q2. If we're in Q0, a B brings us to Q1. If we're in Q0, a C also brings us to Q1. So this will show us all the transitions from Q0 that are going to occur based on our alphabet of A, B, and C. Now what if we're in Q1? Well, if we're in Q1 and we get an A, we come back to Q1. If we're in Q1 and we get a B, we go to Q2. If we're in Q1 and we get a C, we also go to Q1. And that takes care of all of our transitions for A, B, and C out of Q1. How about Q2? Where do we go out of this final state? Well, if we get an A, we go back. An A brings us back to Q0. So it looks like if we start in our initial state and just go A, 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 back and forth, that'll be what happens. If we're in Q2 and we get a B, we also go to Q0. So we've got a B there. If we're in Q2 and we get a C, we stay in Q2. And so there is our state die, our directed graph based, based on the finite state machine that is defined by that state transition table. Now, please understand, finite state machines are used for so much more than just regular expressions. Turns out regular expressions were just a really easy way for me to demonstrate how finite state machines work and the diagrams work. But for example, this, this state transition table and the resulting uh, state diagram Probably not a regular expression, right? The idea is that a finite state machine and these directed graphs that represent them are great ways to model our computing systems because our computing systems naturally go from state to state to state, from condition to condition to condition. And these diagrams will really help us see the overall picture of how they're working.